Hi, my name is Prashant and I'm from IIT Kanpur. And continuing with our lecture series on information and communication technologies, I'm here to talk about blogs. You all must have heard about blogs. Uh, you must have read about it. Some people have blogs. Some are bloggers. Some call themselves bloggers. So who are these people? And what do they do? What is a blog? And we are here to answer those questions. And hopefully towards the end of this lecture, you'll know how to have your own blog. So let's come to the word blog. Blog is a made up word. It wasn't there in the English language till a, a few decades back. And it's made up of two words, web, which we understand as internet and World Wide Web, and log, which is a diary or a journal entry or a record. So when we take the B from the web and the word log, we get the word blog. So it can be used as a noun, that is, a blog is an internet entity, like a website, which acts as a journal or a diary or a canvas to post your thoughts and opinions pertaining to a particular subject matter. It can also be used as a verb, that means to blog, which means to maintain a web-based journal, diary or notebook. And who is a blogger? One person who blogs. Now that we know about the word blog, we can try and understand it in more details. So what are the various kinds of blogs? There are personal blogs in which a blogger may write about his or her own personal life. What's happening? What are they thinking? It, it can be about anything. Friends, family, relationships, your career. So that's a personal blog. Then we have corporate blogs, which companies and organizations maintain as a way to communicate with their customers or other people. They could be informational, like what are the new advances the company has made. They can be to debunk myths if there's a, go if, if there's a rumor going around about the company. They can post a statement on their official blog and counter or discount that rumor. Then there are genre or field specific blogs. You have blogs on data analysis, you have blogs on agriculture, you have blogs on mathematics, you have blogs on physics, where anybody who is an expert of the field comes and writes about that particular field. Then you, people actually use blogs as archives too. That means they collect everything interesting that they find on the internet and they put it on a blog. So that blog eventually becomes a file of everything they found interesting on the internet. I thought that was a very interesting use of blogs. Then there are discussion-oriented blogs. Some bloggers post questions and ask their readers to comment on those questions. And then there are informational blogs, which are mostly factual in nature. For example, if I write, about, if I write a blog about Jupiter, so it's an informational blog. So now we will try and analyze what a blog is. So here we have taken uh, the official Google blog and we'll see what are the various parts of a blog. The first part of a blog is the blog address. If you go to http colon slash slash googleblog.blogspot.in, you will find this blog. So every blog has a blog address, which is a URL. Like every website has a URL, every blog has a URL. Next is the header image. The highlighted part is the header image, which is there to make the blog look good. Then comes the important part, which is the blog title. What is your blog going to be called? For example, if you write a book, your book is called something. The book has a title. Similarly, your blog has a title. So here it is called the Google official blog. It, it has to be very simple. It should convey what it is about. Then you have the blog description, which is a very small summary of what the blog does. For example, this official Google blog is about insights from Googlers into our products, technology, and the Google culture, which means 
everybody who works at Google is free to write on this blog about what Google is coming up with, how are they doing it, and what is the life in a Google complex. Then the most important part of a blog is the posts itself, which is sort of like a chapter. If you, if you consider blogs to, a blog to be a book, then a post is like a chapter of that book. So in this post, you have the post title, you have the content, Content can be text, it can be images, it can be videos. The more uh, engaging the content is, the better your blog is. So then you have the share widget. That means I can share this post on Google Plus or I can tweet about it as you must have known and I can ask my Facebook friends to like it or share it through Facebook. This is to gain readership. You use Twitter, Facebook, all those social media tools to help your blog be popular. And then there is a permalink. Permalink is the URL of your post. Blog address is the URL of your blog. And permalink for this post is this. And a permalink is the URL of your post. Then you have some side links which contain your profiles or they may contain tags or they may be an archive of your posts. These all make up a blog. The blog address, the image, the title, description, post, side links. This is the anatomy of a blog. Now comes the question, why should I blog or why should you blog? You should blog because you have something important to say or you have knowledge to share about your subject. You should also blog because it is free. You can get started for free. And it's a good way to, it's actually a good way to reach out and connect to people and get their opinions on what you think. And it broadens our horizons. And at the same time, if, if your blog is informational, you're actually telling people about your subject, which might be useful for them. Then that's exactly our next point, that blogging allows you to reach a large number of people all over the world. Since it's on the internet, anybody present anywhere can read your blog. And they can comment on it. So if, if I'm, for example, if I'm writing about agriculture in Uttar Pradesh, and a farmer from, or a fellow student agriculture student from Kerala is reading it, then I can communicate with that person through my blog and maybe we can discuss better ways to talk about agriculture. We can come up with new ways to improve agriculture. Not only that, I could even talk to people in Germany or US and talk, read their blogs on agriculture. So it has a lot of advantages, which is our next point that blogs are interactive. You can discuss your ideas and opinions with your readers. And if you're really good at what you write, if your blog is exceptional, it provides very good information, then you can even earn money by blogging. You can use Google Ads. You can uh, provide ads on your blog. And it depends on the number of readers you have. And the number of readers you have depends on the content you post. So it's difficult to earn a very sustainable living by blogging, but you can earn some money by blogging if only if you are exceptional. That's our condition. You have to be really good at blogging, and then maybe you can think about earning some money. Um, how, how do you start a blog? You can use some free blogging services, like the one we just saw that was a Google blogger. You can access it at blogger.com. Okay, Free blogging services are those where you can just create an account and start blogging. It's like buying a notebook, you write your name on it, and you start writing in that notebook. It's as simple as that. So you have Google's Blogger, then you have WordPress, which is slightly more complex than Google Blogger, but it provides you with a lot many features. Then you have Medium. It's a fairly new blogging platform. And it's been doing really well. It, but remember that to start a Medium uh, account, you need, you need a Twitter account. 
So if you have a Twitter account, I think Medium is a very good option for you to start blogging. And then you have Tumblr.com, which is mainly popular amongst young people. Then you have your hosted blogging tools, in which you get your own server, you deploy your software, and you blog using that software. Of course, it requires a bit of technical expertise. Um, you need to be somewhat an expert in IT. If you are, then and you can deploy your own blogs, then Ghost is a very good platform. WordPress, again, allows you to host your own blogs on your own servers. And uh, you can learn more about these at this link that is provided. You can even blog in Hindi. It might sound like we can only blog in English because that's all we have talked about. But there are a lot of ways to blog in your own language. For example, blogger.com provides you tools to blog in Hindi. I know of a lot of bloggers who blog in Hindi. Not just Hindi, they blog in Russian, they blog in Japanese. You can blog in any language you want. Blogging services provide you with a lot of support. Depend, depending on your readership, you should decide whether you should post in Hindi or if you should post in English. If, uh, if I'm trying to reach out to farmers of India, I would prefer writing it in Hindi because they are more well versed with Hindi. So you, you have to decide your language based on what you think uh, your readers are going to understand. So you can check out more at hindiblogs.net. This is another resource that we have pointed out. Then what makes a good blogger? It's not enough to just start a blog and just type away at the keyboard. You have to be good at what you do if you want sustainable readership. If you want people to visit your blog, if you want them to keep visiting your blog every now and then and comment on your posts and discuss, you need to, number one point is focus on the content of the posts. That's the basic premise of being a good blogger. You have to focus continuously on the content of your posts. You have to, before you write, you have to spend a lot of time thinking about how you're going to write, what you're going to write, and what's the best way to present your thought. So you, if you use images or videos, then it keeps the readers engaged. It's not just a big wall of text. You need to have images in your blog posts. The second important habit of a good blogger is that they post regularly but not unnecessarily. Do not write if you do not have anything to write. Post regularly, think about what you're going to post, and then do it. It's not necessary to post daily. It can be a weekly blog. It can be a monthly blog. It can be a fortnight blog. Just don't post unnecessarily because you haven't posted in some time. When you feel like posting and you have a good reason to post, do that. Engage in healthy conversations with your readers. Your readers will comment on your post. They'll give their opinions on the post. Talk to them. Try and understand them so that you know how you can write better, how you can reach out better. For example, if I am trying to teach them about something through my blog, I need to understand how they understand what I write. And as I understand that, I will make my blog better. Uh, they also read other blogs. There are too many people blogging, and it's always helpful to read their blogs, to connect with them. If you're good enough, uh, and if you think they're good enough, you can suggest uh, other blogs to your friends, and uh, the other bloggers can suggest your blog to, your f to their friends, and that, that's how a blog becomes popular. Of course, you have to work to popularize your blog. You have to use Facebook, Twitter, and all these mediums to get some readers onto your website. And with, I think this is enough knowledge for you to go ahead and start your own blog. So there is a little self-assessment assignment. You can create your own blog on agriculture. We're calling it an agricultural blog. And it will be a genre-specific blog. You can write a post about who you are and what is your blog about. Share the link of that blog. Uh, share the blog address. When I mean link, I mean the blog address. You can share the 
blog address on the forums in uh, agmoocs.in. And you can discuss in the forums about how are you going to popularize of your blog and how are the other people thinking of popularizing their blogs. You can read the blogs of other people. So if you engage in these four steps in the coming few days, you will get a good hang of blogging. And when you think about it a bit more, you'll be a very good blogger. So happy blogging and thank you.